of Bloomberg World Headquarters in New York, you're on the Inside Track with Eric Shatsky. And now, for many in the financial markets, the scandal at MF Global brings back memories of Refco, the futures broker that collapsed in a spectacular fraud five years ago. That's a case Peter Kaufman knows well. He advised a significant investor in Refco. Peter is president and head of Gordian Group's restructuring and distressed M&A department. Peter, you know, one of the questions we haven't asked yet is, does anything come out of this mess? Does a company emerge? In the case of Refco, what was left of the regulated futures brokerage ended up becoming what we know now as MF Global. Is there still a business there, or is the fact that they've been shut out of the CME, the LME, the ICE, pretty much every futures market they operate in, mean that it's done? Well, it's, it's, it's unclear yet, but I can say this. Every day that goes by without the assets finding a new home, uh, is a day where it becomes less and less likely that there's much value there. Uh, as you pointed out, the sort of the circle of life or death, if you will, that uh, the Revco assets were sold at a knockdown price uh, to Man Financial, the predecessor of uh, MF Global. And there are lots of similarities here. Uh, MF Global levered 40 to 1. Uh, I, I think, remembering the uh, prospectus on a pro forma basis, uh, MF Global. Uh, I'm sorry, Refco was uh, at 75 billion in assets and maybe a, a billion in shareholders' equity or less. Uh, there was fraud in Refco. Very unclear if there was fraud at MF Global, but there's certainly some smoke. But you know, we like to withhold judgment until we've seen it. Are, are distressed players feeling like if they have this 700 million, if it's not missing, in fact, recovery could be much better than we're realizing, and they could look at this as a buy opportunity? Well, at, at a price, everything is p potentially attractive. I, my speculation is that the reason that the buyer walked away uh, over the weekend was because of this discrepancy, uh, although that's, that's also unclear. But the similarities abound. Refco, MF Global, similar lines of business, both had a run on a bank, uh, on the bank, uh, and both are having problems selling as any kind of going concern. And you, you compare that to uh, how Bear Stearns was sold over a weekend uh, to J.P. Morgan. You know, once you're in bankruptcy, with a f collapse like this, without a buyer in hand, your chances of achieving value get increasingly less. If there was, at the very least, sloppy accounting and perhaps something much worse than that, Peter, how difficult is it going to be to determine what was a loss on market positions in these segregated accounts, perhaps, and what was a loss due to something worse? Well, you know, that's, there's, there's going to be years of litigation flowing from this. You know, uh, we, uh, I was... I've been very involved with Refco litigation for uh, the past while, and this is going to go on likely for years. The real focus, the really interesting part of this to me, is are they going to be able to get any sort of going concern sale or even a sale by unit? Uh, you know, the regulated units are going to be more appealing uh, than the unregulated units uh, for clear reasons. If there are years of litigation, how long could it take for those who have money with MF to get their money back out? You know, that's really a, that's really a SIPC question. Uh, and it could it could take a while. I mean, this is this is a, a, a huge mess. I would look to Refco for you know some some guidelines. So, you specialize to a certain degree, right, in distressed opportunities. Who might have been buying MF Global bonds last week in order to participate in this bankruptcy process if they thought it was headed in that direction? I mean, other than John Corzine. No, <laughs> uh, you know, there there there's a lot of money on the sidelines. A lot of smart distressed money who look at. You know, they look for dislocation. Look, if, the, if everything was clear, if there was clarity in this situation, you wouldn't see the bond prices uh, jumping up and down. So uh, I, I think that there are distressed players who are going to take a flyer on this. And this week, and we actually saw the bond price at, when they announced the fraud go down to 35. And once MF announced, no, we know where the money is, it bounced up to 47. Do, do these distressed guys know more than the headlines do? Maybe, but I doubt it. Peter, good to see you here. I know we'll be having this conversation again. Peter Kaufman of the Gordian Group. He specializes in distressed opportunities and M&A. And much more ahead coming for you on this hour of the